Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing into the CBR954. In the description, I'll put a video link to uh, when I first discovered that this bike could possibly have some issues. And in this episode, I'm gonna be working on trying to fix those issues, diagnose things, and really dive into the bike. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I just popped that cover off to get to this bolt. I started already kind of removing a few bolts, but this bolt's already rounded out. <laughs> Oh man, this bike's just full of surprises. Already, like I, I literally just started, already went into this. All right, well, this is what you sometimes have to do. Okay, so I took that fairing off, and we also have this fairing off, and now we're gonna remove the seat. So I already unscrewed one of the bolts. One was missing, so another great surprise from this bike, but let's go ahead and remove this. Oh, but look at this. Doesn't under here look so clean? Look at that. This is what I was hoping for. OEM looking right here, and this is actually a good sign. I like seeing this. All right, so we're gonna drain the oil. So what we're looking for here is metal shavings. No metal shavings that I can see, but man, is that dark. That is pretty old oil. I don't see any metal though, so that's good. That's a, that's a huge, I don't want to say a surprise, but that's a huge relief. I was a little nervous that there was going to be something bad in there, but this is a good sign. Okay, so right here, that little green wire, it's kind of hard to see, but right there, I'm going to check continuity from this wire to the frame. Yep. I should be getting nothing. I should be getting uh, continuity, and I'm not. The bike is in neutral. Oh, into the oil block bit. Nice. So this is the uh, neutral switch, which I think might be bad. All right, so now we're gonna remove this cover and inspect the clutch. But before I do that, I made this little template here because these bolts are all different lengths. So I'm gonna pull a bolt out and then I'm gonna push it into where it goes here. That way I know exactly where everything goes. This is the sight glass, that's the clutch cable. That way I can know exactly where everything goes and I won't mix them up. All right, so I'm in here now and I'm just inspecting everything because I did hear like a weird sound from this area. I don't know if it was the exhaust rattling or whatever, but I'm just checking. Um, I'm checking all these little teeth in here, making sure they're good. And if I turn this, I can spin it and I could just inspect all them teeth and make sure nothing looks broken. And so far, I've already kind of done this off camera. It does look all in there, no problem. So I'm not sure if the issue lies in here 
or if there even is an issue. Maybe I'm just being too crazy scared about it, but I figured better to be too careful than not careful enough. I guess it needs a new air filter too. Check this out, this is kind of wild, look. I think a mouse got in here or something and just started chewing things up. You got a big, big mark right there, right in here. Just weird. Um, I'm gonna have to get a new one of these because that's not good. Okay, I already removed the velocity stacks. So now this should just pop up. All right, so now I'm in here, got the down to here. Valve cover gasket, looking at that. We got pretty good access to the spark plugs and to this gasket. And you can see right there, it's a little, a little wet. I, I don't really know, but yeah, that's oil. A little bit of an oil leak. So that gasket's gonna have to probably be replaced, I think. All right, so here is the oil leak that I was referring to. You can see a little bit of it pulled up there. And it looks like right up here is um, a little wet. So it must be coming right from there. Okay, so here's the, the head, the valve cover. Um, I already disconnected these hoses. Next, I'm gonna have to remove these plugs and the coils and the pair system. And then I'm gonna have to remove these bolts. And I think I'm just gonna do this all off camera because I can't get a good camera angle at it, and it's been kind of a nightmare to get at this. So I'm just gonna do it off camera, but um, I'll make sure I film it once I take the cover off. Okay, so I got the plugs all out and I got all the bolts out. Everything is removed from the valve cover. Those are the bolts right there. There's only four of them. So four spark plugs and four bolts basically hold this thing on. So now we're gonna have the fun task of removing the valve cover. I already unhooked these cables. They're still hooked in down there but I have them off that way, so maybe I can maneuver this cover around that cable. Um, hopefully I can maneuver it around it, but we'll see. This is not gonna be fun. Okay, so I finally got everything removed. This has been the biggest pain in the butt ever. Not only did I have to remove the spark plugs, those four bolts over there, 
and like some hoses and stuff, but I also had to disconnect the throttle from here because these cables were dangling in the way and I knew it was gonna be a problem trying to reconnect them to here. So I decided it'd be easier to do that. So now the cables are over to the side and then the wiring harness, the main loom right here was in the way as well. So I had to literally unhook everything from the loom and push it over here, swing it on this side. So now I should have the clearance to hopefully pull this cover out. What a nightmare. If this thing's still leaking when I'm done, I'm just leaving it because I'm, I'm not dealing with this again ever, ever again. This was terrible. And you gotta do all of this to do the valves to adjust them? No thanks. All right, well, here's the valve cover. Here's our gasket. It was leaking from right here. And look at that. Let's take a look. Well, let's get some light on the situation here. So here's our gasket and look at it. You can see right in here, look at that. I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but it was leaking, so we're gonna replace it. And here is the top of my engine. Look at that. <laughs> Yikes. No, no, I, I've never been much of an engine guy, you know. I mean, I've done piston rings before on dirt bikes and whatnot, but no, this is too much for me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm just going to replace this cover and button this back up. Well, I was going to film me removing this gasket and putting the new one on, but my tripod just snapped and broke. So, so I'm just going to finish this job off camera. I mean, this has been such a hassle and I just got to finish it. So sorry, guys, I'm robbing you of the moment a little bit, but. This is just a sign that I need to focus on, on this. I can't worry too much about the cameras. So, sorry about that guys, but I'm gonna take this cover off or this uh, gasket off and I'm gonna clean around it with this rag, some alcohol, and then I'm gonna put the new one on and hopefully it doesn't ever leak. All right guys, so I got the new valve cover gasket on and here's the valve cover installed. I got the block off plates installed as well. And now all that's left is put the spark plugs back in and the bolts and then I can start rewiring the thing and doing all this other stuff, putting everything back together. But we're pretty much there, guys. Holy smokes, was that a nightmare. This, if it leaks again, I'm not bothering fixing it, but over here is where it was leaking. And it looks like I got a pretty good the seal looks like it's on there pretty good. And of course you guys know I bought brand new spark plugs as well. And look at these ones. These ones, uh, they, they look like they could be replaced. So I guess it's a good thing I went down here. So at least I know I have new, brand new NGK spark plugs. All right guys, so apparently I just recorded a bunch of stuff, but it, the video format was all wrong. So I'm not gonna be able to show you the install, but right here we have the gear indicator put in. And uh, it's not programmed yet because you need oil in the bike to do that. And you have to run the bike and I can't do that because there's no oil in it. But the way I did it was I have it hooked up right here. I'm going to obviously tuck this wire in nice, but it's going to go back here. All the slack is going to go tucked in here like that. I have the wire. It's kind of going up over this right now, but I'm not sure if I'm going to leave it that way. I might reroute it some other way. I'll let you know if I do, but essentially... It just runs down along inside here. In here, you can't really see it. There is a th three pin connector down in there. So it's connected down in here. And so it connects in here. There's like just one wire you have to plug in. You just take, you unplug the one and plug it in there. And then there's another wire that runs back over to the ECU, which is under here. And there's two connectors. There's a gray connector and a black connector, I believe or a blue one, I can't remember, but the gray one has a solid yellow wire. And I went ahead and I used a posse tap and I tapped right into that. The gear indicator came with one of these connections and I hate these. These things 
I've seen them fail so many times, including this is what got, uh, left me stranded on my RC51 because the person, it just failed. So I use posse taps. I'll have a link in the description if you want them. So anyway, gear indicators installed. Now I'm working on neutral safety light or whatever, trying to figure out what the hell's going on with that. So off camera, I went ahead and replaced the neutral switch and fixed that problem. Sorry I didn't film any of this. I was just having a lot of trouble getting it all to fit together and I just decided to do it off camera. I did this all before my rebuild series. So if you're really interested in watching an air box get installed, you can look it out over there. But basically I got the pair block off in. I just kind of used the plug and then I just taped it in. That should be just fine. And I got all the sensors plugged back in, all the tubes plugged back in. All right, everyone. So we are very close to being done. I haven't really filmed a lot of it just because I'm trying to get it done as soon as possible. It's been hard working on this and the ZX-14. But basically we have resealed the cover now. I got a nice little seal going right here. I hope I did it right. Um, I used the correct stuff and I, I let it dry for about four days. There's no oil in this engine. And I also replaced the oil filter and placed this cover. And I really am curious, hopefully this doesn't leak up here. So I was taking off this uh, drain bolt and I noticed that, okay, let's go ahead and remove it real quick so I can show you guys. Okay, so here I have the old one. And as you can see, the old one, Hopefully I can focus here. The uh, the bolt head was starting to round a little bit from so many people not using, probably using universal or just the incorrect size sockets. But anyway, this is um, going to be, and plus there's no, is there no washer on this either? I better check and make sure it's not stuck to the motor. It's not. Um, it might have fell in the drain pan. I don't know. I, maybe there wasn't a washer. Uh, but I went ahead and <laughs> replaced it with this one. Um, I did notice that the nut on this one is bigger. It's a uh, 17 millimeter, which is this is a uh, 12 millimeter. So hopefully it clears everything all right. But it has a magnet on it and a brand new crush washer. So I'm going to use this. And it is about the same. Ah, dang it. It is the same length. So the threads aren't going to go too much further up. But yeah, I'm just going to put that in right here. Oh, <laughs> that's the problem with magnets. Put that on, yep. Spin it in good. Sorry, this is probably like the worst angle ever. Okay, well, I got it on there a little bit. I'm gonna put the rest on my hand and just give it a little snug with the wrench. Okay, and we have our shiny new bolts on there. Torque down and everything's good to go. Now we just gotta add oil and uh, I guess run it. <laughs> Dang, I'm nervous. Okay, guys, moment of truth. We're going to attempt to start the bike the first time since basically when I got the bike. I'm so nervous. Okay. So after hearing that my engine is making this weird noise, I decided to try one more thing. I went ahead and ordered a brand new cam chain tensioner. Now if you guys don't know, doing a cam chain tensioner on a 954 is an absolute nightmare. Here, just watch the footage and you'll see. Alright, so now I have these throttle bodies completely unbolted and moved over a little bit. So hopefully I can get access to this. I moved the wiring harness out of the way. Moved a few hoses out of the way. This one I can't move because it goes to the coolant. I don't feel like draining it out. But I have a pretty good access to this bolt now. So hopefully I can remove it. Going to do it off camera. But it definitely helps to have this crap moved over there. Just look at how tight that tolerance is from the bolt to the frame. 
a regular 8mm wrench just won't fit right, so I had to improvise. Yes, this is a shaved down wrench to practically nothing. It's the only way I could get it to fit on the bolt. Guys, when I said this job was a nightmare, I meant it. This is hands down the most difficult thing I've ever done on a motorcycle. So here's the old one and here's the new one. And I actually noticed somewhere, if you look at the old one, see right there at the top, how it has that like gash versus the new one, which is nice and smoothed. So I don't know how much a difference that makes. Probably not much of one, but it is noticeable. All right, the brand new cam chain tensioner is in. Now what I do is I pull this pin and that sets the plunger forward, so. There we go. And that should send the plunger forward. I'm guessing. I didn't hear anything, so we'll see. Well, and that's it guys. The 954 is officially done. The noise seems to be gone, although after doing some research, apparently the 954 is known to have something called piston slap, which is very common and actually somehow not considered a big deal. They say just let it warm up fully before riding and you'll be all right. Either way, it's not making the sound now, so maybe the CCT fixed it, or maybe it's just behaving for once. Either way, I'll take it at this point. The gear indicator has been calibrated and all the little things have been fixed. There are no leaks and everything works. Fingers crossed, but thank you guys so much for watching. This bike totally kicked my butt. However, it's okay because I finished it and I feel very accomplished. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Take care and bye-bye.